So yes, so now I'm going to teach you what is the uh, sorry. I'm basically I'm going to cover what is the sorry. This is a hundred percent theoretical session. Okay, so these two hours only theory, and other sessions which is like a Kubernetes and other tools will have a completed demo based sessions. So that is how we'll get into that. So yeah, so sorry. So here we have a three words. Okay, here we have a three words. Site. And then second keyword which we have is reliability, and third one in which we have engineering. So site means our website, our applications which we host, which we manage for our end user. Reliability is a huge word actually. Reliability, I mean, you can say uh, it has lots of uh, small, small, you know, keyword and. Uh, uh, to make the site reliable, you have to not only do one thing, you have to do hundreds of things. Now, some of the things I'll discuss in this also, but reliability means that uh, overall your application, the uh, website should be uh, live, up and running without any issues as such, with a good user experience for the end user. That is a reliability. And engineering, there is a one keyword which we have engineering. So when you manage the website, for reliability, your objective is reliability. Your website should be reliable for the end user. So for that, you need to follow certain approach. Certain approach means what approach? Uh, that approach, some certain tools, certain practices, certain mindset, certain culture, we need, which you need to develop in the team. And then everything you start doing through the coding. Yes, engineering approach means engineering team, you know that they do the code. So this practices you have to bring it in SRE team also. That means earlier you used to call it ops team. Now we have SRE team. So yes, SRE team will manage the website. The objective is to make it reliable for the end user and the approach what they will follow is of the developers engineering team. Are you understanding all of it? Yep. Yes, yes, yes. yes. yeah. So yeah, site reliability engineering, that's for site reliability engineering started another way. Reliability can be seen as a profit, probability of success, durability, dependability, quality over time, ability to perform our functions. So multiple things are there. Okay, I don't want to complicate with a few keywords because that will hardly matters to you uh, in your work. But yes, when you want to convey some messages to the management or the peers or someone else outside, then and, and you're in a discussion, so you have to do that. So you have to know about this. So what is an SR? What is SRE? So uh, this is an approach uh, to operations. It's operation teams, okay? So it's an approach to operations which uses software as a primary tool for managing a system, okay? Multiple software which we use it in the operations. Now uh, here, engineering. We understand that engineering approach. You you bring the approach actually. Engineering approach. It's approach to operations. So what approach? Engineering approach. So what engineering they do that? So they, whenever they develop some functionality, they plan for it, they design for it, they develop for it, they test for it, they deploy and then maintenance. Something similar you are going to do that. You as a team, something you have to uh, you know implement. So start planning for it. Then design for it. Then code for it then test and deploy and maintain. So bring the engineering approach in the ops team that is called SRE. So site reliability engineering is what happens when you ask a software engineer, mind it, when you ask a software engineer to design a design and operation teams. Software engineer, those who love to code and you want to design, you are asking them to design the operations team that is called SRE. So this is the extensions of operations over the period of time, which body improved. And this is this is said by Benjamin, who's the founder of Google SRE, in fact. So this this uh, keyword that that's called this uh, this keyword, which is called SRE, is coming because of Google. They have introduced this concept. They have come up with a lot of practices, use cases, practice, uh, tool set, templates, pros and cons for each and everything, what should be done, what should not be done, everything they have come up with it. And now the whole world is practicing the same thing. Yeah, so they have published one book also, so you might want to refer it. So at the end of it, you will ask, 
okay, fine. I want to have a SRE organization or SRE team in place. So what are the responsibilities which we are going to perform? So yes, you're going to take care of the availability. That means the site should be available 24 by 7 without even single second of the downtime. Then SLA should be matched. SLO should be under control and everything. So that is your availability. You have to make it available the system. And also not only it should be available, the performance of the system should be the optimal. So the UX user experience should be wonderful. And also if any issues, of course, issues will come, right? You may have a different, different kind of issue. So uh, you have to manage your incident also, incident management. And then on top of that, we have to set up a monitoring. Now, I would not say monitoring, but I would say observability. You have to set up an observability for it. By the way, anyone have idea what is observability? I would like to know from you guys. Anyone? So observability is like monitoring. Uh, okay, so the monitoring is keyword is coming in that uh, to check the health of the apps uh, proactively. Yeah, so monitoring is a basically subset of observability. So observability is cover the larger scope. So monitoring, if you look at the monitoring world, which is there from last 20, 30 years, uh, basically works on the data which is, has happened in the past. Past means some of the data which has like CPU and RAM and all stuff like that, which you got it, uh, which has consumed in the past uh, or the present in which you get it. But uh, using the observability, it will help you for, uh, you know, uh, prediction also. So this is also a very good thing. OK, so this is something which you have it. Rajesh, so uh, for incident management, I wanted to know like as an SRE, is it a responsibility for resolving the incident or is it a responsibility to identify how the system is being impacted and we should reduce the incident? So what exactly is the response responsibility over there? Uh, can you come again? I just got lost in the question. So when we say that uh, responsibility of an SRE is for the incident management. Yes, yes. Is it a responsibility to resolve those incidents or is it a responsibility to analyze and observe what kind of incident the systems are having and reduce them? Uh, everything, all, all of this which you said and much more than that. So not only uh, when you say incident management, complete life cycle of incident management. That means the movement SRE team is responsible for the, the moment the incident get opened, then you will work on that particular incident. OK, and you will try to see the pattern whether the incident is recurring all the time. So you have to automate it actually. So next time that incident should not open up. If it is a, like a unique incident, then it's OK. You can fix it and move on to the second one or something like that. Also, you'll create a documentation that we call it a run book actually. OK, you'll create a documentation share with your team and then try to close it. So you you as a team have to do everything. Entire life cycle of incident management you have to perform. Make sense? Got it. Yeah, and monitoring. So here we'll talk about the observability. Basically, uh, probably, uh, you know, if I get a time, I'll talk about observability also. But observability, basically, what you are doing in a nutshell, I'll tell you. Observability or monitoring all the matrices, that means systems and servers, and then applications, matrices, events, logs, APM, synthetic, RAM, everything put it up together. And on based on that, you analyze the data that's called observability. You predict the future based on the data that's called observability. So nowadays, observability is a very popular key term rather than monitoring. But yes, we have these are the responsibility. So what are the activities of an SRE? So yes, write a code. Write a code. So if you're getting scared, don't be because I just said Ops team to SRE team. This is a transformation has to happen. And SRE means engineering approach. Any problems you have, you have to write a code for it. 
start writing a code for it. And then you say, Rajesh, am I going to write a code for the job in Java or something like that? No. So there is a three types of coding as per my learnings. One code you write for the product, the functionality of the product. And then another code you write for the testing the product. And third code which you write for the CICD, infrastructure, uh, monitoring, uh, um, you know, uh, configuration management and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm talking about write a code which can help you to, you know, not recurring that issues incident again, which is in the same with same with the same pattern. So write a code in Ansible, write a code in Terraform, write a code in CACD pipeline, maybe write a code for security, write a code for automating certain tasks, API, uh, automating API operations using Python and all, YAML, JSON, you know, various uh, tools which you have in operation which you have to work with it. Right? Are you understanding all of you, Pets? Yes. yes. Be on call. Be on yes. call. Leader yes. war room. So there is a problem in the software. So you have to lead uh, this war room. And you have to perform the postmortem, which I said, right? You get an incident. You have to perform the postmortem. So there's some templates which Google suggests how you should do the postmortem. There is one incident. I need to do the postmortem. And that postmortem should uh, I, I should have a nice postmortem report for that. And we see that if it's a pattern, it's a unique incident or the incident which is recurring in the pattern. And if it isn't pattern, we have to work on to automate it. Automate, implement the best practices and best practices. There are a lot of best practices which we have. But as per my feelings, which, which if I say best practice is something which uh, which you as a team decides for your project. Because uh, you know, uh, we have uh, hundreds of best practices available in the in the Google from the different organizations, but not everything which my suitable for you. So if you if you sit as a team, if you be gather as a team and discuss about the problems first, pain area, what you are doing, what you are not doing, what you are supposed to do, what you are not supposed to do for your project, what tool you should use, what tool you should not use it, how much budget you have, how many people you have, what are the skill set you have, how what are the improvement areas which you have to, uh, you know, you have to upskill upskilling area which you have to gain it. So this is all put it together and become a best practices, simple. So you can create your own best practices as well. So these are the functions of site reliability engineering, and these are the important functions. So anyone who, if you're asking, hey, okay, so you are in ops team, now you are in a SRE team, how does it different? What special things you are doing, which you are not doing in operations, or maybe less doing in operation, now you will do more in SRE. So you'll say, hey, the primary goal of SRE, which, which we got migrated from ops to SRE, the eliminating a toil. A toil means simply the work which is in repetitive in nature. So you want to on automate, eliminate it. How? Automation, coding, and all stuff like that. So eliminate the toil, automating manual tasks, repetitive tasks, and that's your primary functions of SRE team. And after that, managing a risk. What is the risk I'm talking about here? Anyone? Anyone have idea what risk I'm talking about it? Deployment no. times. Deployment times. So guys, I'm I'm sure about it. You must have work with the AWS or your Google Cloud or any SaaS based software. Correct? Any SaaS based software. So now you know every website, every site, every application which you see, they have they have service level agreement with the client. We call it SLA. SLA. That means if you breach the agreement, then you will have to pay for it. You have to pay for it. You have to pay for it. So if you breach the agreement, you have to pay for it. So this is something which we have to do that. So anyone have idea what are the different different services which we have on AWS and what is their SLA agreement by the AWS? Anyone have idea? Anyone have idea? 
<laughs> you are talking about the compute infrastructure. Yes. Uh, talking about the storage. Yeah. About the so, um, cloud performance. Uh, yeah. So every if you look at the each services of AWS or any cloud for the sake of it, or any like a Google also, Gmail also, or any other services, web-based application, Flipkart, Amazon, this, that, and all, ICIC Bank, everyone has a SLA. SLA is, is a, like an agreement, it's a contract. You will sign with your clients and the user. For example, let's say you guys are developing a website of ICICI.com and you are managing also. So ICIC Bank is a client. You are a development engineering engineering team plus SRE team. So you will have signed a contract with ICIC Bank and saying that hey, if my ICIC Bank uh, SLA, I mean the runtime is not 99.9999 percent, then you will have to pay this much of money. It's like SLA contract risk. It's a risk. So if the site is down, do you, beyond that certain agreement, the one which you sign it, then you have to pay in, in return actually, because this is their loss actually, All right? ICC bank is losing the money, so they will also fine you for that, what you are not, uh, you know, achieving the SLAs for it. Are you understanding all of you? So SLA, the client contract between the, the, the uh, clients and then you, development team, SRE team. And then you SRE team also, you, you also guys, you maintain one SLO. That's what, what should be the objective. So SLO should be always under SLA. Okay, so SLA is at the client level, but SLO within a team. So you say, hey, we as a team, we commit for this SLO. So these are the, our objective, response time for this particular application or availability or reliability, whatever it, number of errors, rate of errors, uh, or whatever it is, it should not go beyond that. Why? Because we should not reach to SLA. We should not pay the fine. Correct now? So SLO, SLA, and there is one more matrix you might heard, you might be hearing a lot in SRE, which is called SLI. What is SLI? What is SLI? Visual indicator. Indicator. That means what is your current status? So see here, it's very simple. Current status, you get it from the system through the monitoring and observability. Objective you set within a team, which you to have to adhere at any cost, and SLA between the you and your client. So managing a risk, SRE team will manage a risk, will always try to agree to the service level with explicit tolerance. What is allowed, what can be tolerated, what cannot be tolerated, and all these things. And on top of it, handling the failures, incident management, and postmortem. So these are the primary functions of SRE team site. Reliability engineering. Are you understanding, guys? All of you? Yes. Yes, Rajesh. Yes. So that's important. So these are the functions which we have. So how do we compare the traditional ops which we are into S and SRE? So see here, very simple image, easy to explain. In fact, so earlier what used to happen. Ops team, they used to directly report to the business leadership and development team also, they used to do the same thing. But there was huge gap between the ops team and development team. So op development team say, hey, I want this feature to be uh, introduced. And ops team say, hey, no thanks. We want the reliability. We don't want your new features. If you want your future, probably we'll work on it, but slowly I'll introduce this feature and might take, see, uh, you development team wants this feature to be introduced in the next week, but ops team will make it two months later. So the market, uh, you know, will become, I mean, the, the, the feature launch and addressing the market will be compromised, right? So here ops team says, hey, I want the reliability. But development team says, I want the new, new stuff, new feature, new functionality all the time. And you know what? This is a very interesting thing. Same business management team expect the reliability from the operations team and the same business team, the management team, expect the new stuff from the development team. Correct? No? Correct? No? So how do you fill this gap? You know, earlier, if you look at the waterfall model, Many years before, before Agile came, 
this was a problem this something similar kind of problems which we had in the development team versus qa team so development team were developing something else and qa team were testing something else and they were having huge gap between them development versus qa so what they did so they remove the waterfall model they bring the agile model and in agile model you have to work together you have to work together you have to have a same same day sync up every day sync up meeting and multiple other pro practices also got introduced i'm not getting into that but remember that earlier we had a gap between the development and qa we got it aside now we have a gap between the operations and development we have to bring something right some some new practices new tools new process new mindset new culture but wrapping up with some key, key, new keyword which google named it srm correct no yes sir yes right so this is something which we have so development team is involved with the design development testing acceptance ops team are involved in support maintenance and capacity planning and they too have a different skill set different tool sets no common ground and they will work only during the delivery and that time they will fight like like anything they will fight hey this is your mistake this is my mistake this is your mistake and it's not my mistake something like that okay this will, this will be done but not now maybe next month next month next month next month next month so like that this is how the project get delayed and you know the delay bring the technical debt you know because of technical debt many organization has ha have died actually they cannot sustain because of high cost of their development and running the software and very uh, delay in the feature i mean delay of the software feature in the market so yeah this is the one so some of the some of the characteristics of ops team which you should understand and i believe all of you know that so they have a ops team most of the time used to work in a black box delivery limited agency and after the event they will do the reactions for example black box delivery means no design input automation options are limited infrastructure level monitoring they do that not observability mind it these are the limitation limited agency post exception go or no go decision they do that and conflict guaranteed after the event mandated service level and receive reactive support reactive not a proactive reactive that means issues has come then you will react it's not like you will predict the issues and then do the uh, do actions before and only no so it's like this so what to do in this case what to do so here look at this my uh, screen guys this is the ops team okay and this is the sari team so what do we got it but we got it so here ops team got changed to sr team so let's say you guys are right now today ops team but tomorrow i will call you sr team then you will say rajesh only the name change will 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 it affect anything else i am being called ops team then tomorrow you are calling sr team how does that matter yeah it matters a lot let me tell you in order to be from transforming from the operations team to the sre team what you need to do you know what first thing you have to change your mindset are you ready for coding or not yes good no ops team are you ready to change the culture within a team when i say culture see mindset is a individual stuff i will change my mindset you will change your mindset that's individual level but at a team level culture has to change are we ready to you know work together reduce the repetitive work automate most of the work bringing the you know automation in place best practices in place best uh, processes in place avoid the wastage pain area work is a team this is the culture actually and it's not one day you will be building actually to be honest it might take 6 month 1 year 2 years it is taking time so it's a team effort so yes first thing if you want to transform into from sr uh, from uh, ops team to sre team change your mindset change the culture of your team 
then bring lots of automation in place and introduce lots of practices and uh, process, tool set, automations, and blah, 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 blah. Then you will become a SRE team. And so also, you need to work with the engineering team. You need to work with the SR, uh, development teams. At what level? So yes, you see here, development team, you will do the design, development, testing, acceptance, testing. That is for sure. But you need to involve at the design stage, saying that, okay, are you writing a code for this? Okay, so uh, if I run the same code, how much CPU, how much RAM, or how much infrastructure we need it? Let me be ready much in advance. So when you come back to us during the release, I'll say we'll, we are ready for the release within a one day. So we will get all the design inputs during the development, during the during the design, during the development, during the acceptance testing. So a SRE team will be involved. Let me tell you, let me tell you, they are not going to work with them. They are going to get involved with them so they can get a clear clarity. It's an integration issue. They get a clarity about what my development team is doing this month. So they will come back to us with certain new feature next month. So I'll be more prepared because I'll be knowing about the requirement runtime or anything as such as uh, capacity planning and all stuff like that. So I'll be more more prepared and I can instead of saying that I will um, help you for the one month, I can make it in one hour or two days because I'm already prepared for that. Are you understanding? All of you? Yep. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. yes. Yes. So it's like you have to work with it. This is called mindset changes. This is a cultural changes. Sometimes say, hey, ops team, hey, I don't care about the, what development team is doing, what code they are writing. I don't want to worry about it. Whenever they will come, I'll take care of it. That's the ops team. But you'll say, no, I want to see the design. I want to see the their development efforts. I want to see that what, what are the parameters they have it for acceptance testing. So same parameter, we will clone it at the production level also. I want to plan for capacity planning. I want to see the runtime environment. I want to see that security loopholes, uh, what they may bring it. Maybe you should advise, okay, you guys are doing the, this development, but there is a, some security loopholes you may introduce in the runtime because I, uh, we are running a production server. We know that what should be there, one, uh, what should not be there. So yes, so when you bring, when you transform the operations team to SRE team, there's become a shared goal, overlapping skill set, consistent tool, common basics. And these are the areas where you want to work together. So not only you will work with the development team, development team also will work with you during the support. Support. How? So there's some issues in the system. I mean, there is one incident got opened. And I'm not sure what to do. So yes, development team will work with you on the same platform consistent tooling, common basics, same platform, and they say, hey, hey I, I, I got to know these issues. Actually, this issues is because of some pro coding issues or some function call or some configuration issues. I can help you. It's like, so why we are doing all this thing? But why we are doing this, all this thing? Because we want to reduce the, reduce the downtime. We want to reduce the integration time. We want to reduce the, uh, you, you want to improve the availability and reliability of the applications. For the, we want to improve the customer experience of our end user. So we all are, you know, coordinating with each other at the very high, I mean, very low level. Earlier we used to do at the high level. Okay, so yes, development team also will work with the support and capacity planning, and they will help you. They will give their inputs. You can give their inputs. So now in the SRE world, you both need to work together. Okay, I'm not saying like you're going to write a code for the product or testing the product, but yes, you have to write a code. You have to bring the engineering approach. You have to write a code for infrastructure. You have to write a code for configuration management. You have to write a code for security. You have to write a code for the uh, deployment and all stuff like that. Monitoring. So this is the SRE team. So yes, SRE team will bring agreed delivery full agency after the events also. So on my design inputs, you can you can be a part of it. Extended automation options, user focus monitoring, dev supports you have available, stop deployments, hand back to the pagers, and agreed service level and limited support time. So these are the some of the characteristics of SRE team. So when you want to compare DevOps versus SRE, then how can you do that? So guys, DevOps, the one which you might be hearing a lot, from last uh, almost eight years, almost eight years. 
everyone is talking about that I want to become a DevOps engineer and I want to hire a DevOps engineer. We want to practice DevOps in our project. We are a DevOps company actually. Uh, I think you all know about that, right? But what is a DevOps, guys? What is a DevOps? Anyone? Anyone? They do help in the applications deployment and server configurations. Uh, combination of, yeah, combination of development and operations. Yes. And monitor the memory leakages and memory issues. Oh yeah, that anyways operations will do that. So you combine the team, so everything. So I'll put it in a very simple way because uh, I'll share some of the my ex I mean old recordings on DevOps. It's like a three to four hours of lecture. Okay, just remind me on that. So I'll put it in a very simple way. Uh, we are talking about lots of DevOps, but you know, hardly few organizations are doing DevOps. Why? Because DevOps, we don't have a too many teams actually. Not too many. <laughs> we don't have a two, even two teams actually. We don't have any teams actually. We have only one team. There is a one team, one goal. One objective, one mindset, one culture, common practices, common process, common tool set. Only one team who is responsible for coding for the software. I repeat, the team, the same team, you are responsible for coding for the software, you are responsible for coding for the testing the software, and you same team is responsible for the coding for the infrastructure, CI, CD operations and security. That means you as a one team will do everything for the software develop planning till the delivery and operations. No multiple team, no dev team, no QA team, no IT team, no operations team, no architect team, no multiple team. There's one team and that's called DevOps team and they will do everything. Huge objective actually. This is like a dream comes true for the organizations. But you know what? In the real time, if you if you practice, if you see that trends which is going on. So they have a development team also. They have a QA team also. They have an architect team also. They have a DevOps team also. So now basically what I have seen, I have I have uh, I have ex uh, experience. DevOps team basically nothing but sometimes builder release team they migrate it to DevOps team or sometimes they the operations team they call it a DevOps team. Sometimes the automation team they call it a DevOps team. Sometimes tooling team they call it a DevOps team. But is it really DevOps team? No, because as I said, DevOps team is a one team which is responsible for planning till operations. Everything will be done by one team. And are you the one? No, maybe not. Maybe yes. So DevOps team, and it's very difficult to achieve this target actually. If you really want to practice the real DevOps, it's lots of changes required at organization level. Lots of changes required at the individual level and team level. And achieving is a really challenging for the organization. So you know DevOps actually, it is a very nice concept, very nice thing. But in reality, many organizations failed to do that, including Google. So they realized it. Yes, if if I expect everything to be done from the one team, might not work. Might not work. So can we have instead of you know earlier what we have multiple teams and suddenly you bring it one team, merge it all to, all teams together. So you know that change. People don't like a change. You know that people don't like this. They, they say I like to be changed, but actually they don't like to be changed, get a change. OK, so, so I'll, I'll put it in simple way. Uh, we all travel from from home to office through through buses. I mean, through, through car and bike, right? We all have Uber also we have a. But suddenly uh, in the outer ring road, the government of Bangalore introduced the buses on direct lane action. Have you seen that? All of you? Yes, Rajesh. Yeah. Yeah, but how many of you we have tried for that? So that that whole lane was empty, few buses. It was, you know, so they do not attract the lots of users actually, the lots of passengers because we don't want to change. We still we are going. We'll reach office a little bit ten minutes later, but still we don't want to change. So yes, 
So the same thing has happened in the software industry also, software projects, software companies also. Uh, it's very difficult to transform the employees and employer also, by the way. Employer means organization also. Organization also is like very scared to change. You know, bringing the new practices like they'll get scared. And sometimes, you know, introduction of the new practices, new process might take years and two years and five years also. I have seen few organizations, they've been driving the training of DevOps. They got transformed everyone. I mean, they got trained everyone. And then after that, they said, no, we'll not do the DevOps. We'll go into the SRE. Why? So this is a huge, uh, huge, huge uh, objective you have. Suddenly you want to change from X to Y side of it. So yes, this has failed, and that's where the Google realized that, and they said, hey, let's not, not do the DevOps immediately. Let's do that. DevOps is good. There's no doubt about it, but let's do one thing. First, transform into SRE. That means, see, you have a one team, engineering team, those who are supposed to do the development and testing, and then you have operations team. Let's do one thing. First, let them work together at a certain levels, and once they'll start working together for a few months or a few years, and once they get comfortable with each other, their mindset, tool set, uh, ecosystem, culture, and everything will, when they get adjusted with each other, then practice the DevOps. So yes, so the SRE is, a, is a one of the way to reach through the DevOps concept. So yes, here business says, give me the reliability to the same team and give me the new stuff but devops is saying what you know hey no new feature until automated uh, we have automated the release process because you i said right in the in the in the in the devops culture everything has to be automated except the coding so everything from should be automated this called ci cd process i think some of you might be you know practicing it as well so CI means continuous integration, then continuous delivery, then continuous deployment. So these are the things people want to do that in the DevOps team. So when the business wants the new reliability, a new feature, DevOps team says, hey, we are transforming into the DevOps. Just give me some time. We want to work on the automations right now, integration right now, uh, uh, training right now. Slowly we'll do that. That is where the gap is. So there's uh, some challenges. So DevOps team will do everything, design, development, testing, acceptance, delivery, support, maintenance, and capacity planning. Everything will be done by the DevOps, and that is a huge objective. I, you know that. Okay, so that is where SREs is a one of the mid objective, you can say, in order to reach out the DevOps team. So it's very difficult, very challenging, Suddenly you are expecting the multiple teams to become one team, change the mindset, change the culture, change the processes, practices, tool sets, and everything. So rather than doing so harshly, do it in a slow way, slow manner. So first let them work together, development and operations, let them work together, transform the operations to the SRE team, ask them to integrate and closely work with the development team. Also ask the development team to work with the SRE team, but still making it the two different team, two different functions, not merging it completely, but bringing the closed integrations in place. And that is all about the demo, uh, SRE. So guys, are you understanding what I'm trying to talk about? <coughs> yes. So this is the SRE team. So SRE team and DevOps team, there's something in common, something which you have to do that, which I have discussed more or less. <coughs> so yes, you have to decide. You put it together, development team or DevOps team, and make it one team that's called DevOps team, or development team will become a development team only and slowly transition to the ops team, to the SRE team, and change their mindset, culture, tool set, automations, and blah, 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 and then let them work together. So this is a sanity. So technology barrier, yes. There will be some common technology which they will be working. So here Docker, Kubernetes, and all the platform. Of course, developing team also will, will work on it. SRE team also will work on it. Programming side, they will only take care of the development team. And here monitoring side, observability, and all only taken care by the SRE team. So 
now we are getting into the discussion of functions of SRE and detailed way. So anyone have any questions? Anyone have any any opinions or you want to share your experiences? And uh, you know we can we can have few few minutes. Yeah. What do you think? Anyone? What do you think? Let's participate in the discussions. Yeah, I mean till now like uh, what? Uh, at least I was correlating most of the things like whatever you have shared, like for the SRE responsibilities, we are doing it and uh, that needs to be extended for the. Sure. So guys, any challenges you guys are facing right now in the project? This is a very important thing actually. So what challenges you are facing? Uh, basically, see, uh, everyone is talking about the SRE and everyone is talking about the DevOps and then going for DevOps training or SRE training. It will not make any sense. So are you having some challenges in the project? So maybe SRE will help or DevOps will help. So what, what challenges you are having in the projects? Can we, can we discuss on that front? They so rather than... Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Rather than... Uh, challenges in the project, right? Because we have we 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 as a team there we, we don't uh, get into the day to day you know, development of the projects, right? Yeah. But yeah. as an SRE team, so the the all the folks that are in in this uh, training, they are more or less they are um, we, we call it we call ourselves as SWAT team, mm -hmm. um, but you know half the team they do uh, you know SRE work. The challenge from the SRE you know, perspective is, um, you know, when when some of the development that happens, let's say there's some modernization, modernization happens or some, um, you know, uh, um, you know, new new project or new, you know, infrastructure on this thing. So we we may not come to know that earlier in the life cycle, right? So that makes it a little bit challenging, you know, if, if, we, if we come to know, uh, you know, later and we have to pull up the pull up the socks at that point in time. So that one sure. challenge this one, but it, you know, we have we have we have evolved a lot, right? Compared to what it what it was like a couple of years back and, and now, but still we have some you know, room and uh, still some some more collaboration need to happen at the really very you know earlier stage you know, of the development, like the way you showed in that one of the slide. Oh. Um, you know where you know the SRE is also part of the you know designing and uh, development is also part of the capacity planning, right? So that yeah. that level of uh, you know early interaction need to happen. That that's True. you know somehow I feel we are not there yet. Yeah, yeah, great. Yes, it's a gradual process, guys. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. So uh, my experience is very. Uh, I, I mean, see. So many things we have in the software industry, so many uh, keywords which we have. Uh, my understanding is very simple. First, let's change myself. Ready to work and automate everything. Ready to change myself, learning new technology, new processes, new practices. I will change myself. I will learn my technology, some of the technologies, and then we'll try. It. Everyone will do the same, something similar, and then we'll become a team and change as a team culture of working, change the working style also, changing the commitment, delivery, uh, and all stuff like that. So slowly, gradually, uh, if we keep practicing it and uh, learn from the experiences, some of the things will do good, some of the things will do the bad, and uh, you know, keep filtering it out, the good thing, uh, and then pr keep practicing and bad things also, same way. So that is how gradually we can do the transformations. Uh, this is how it is. So uh, any, I mean, I'm, I've been working in the software industry from last 18 years and uh, every two to three years we have a new keyword actually. Hey, let's try this. Let's try that. And if I look at this, each keyword is around only three, three, three milestone, three objective. That means software organization want to improve the quality of the software compared to the last one. That is one thing. Each software organizations want to reduce the release cycle uh, for the software functionality in the market 
so earlier we used to do the release in the five years, then bring it back to the one year, then six months, then three months, then two weeks. Then now hours, maybe second may in future may you never know seconds also may come. So it's like that. And then also on top of that, every software organizations want to reduce the software development cost and running cost. And for that, they want to transform into something different one. So yes, that's a gradual process. Every time you'll have this kind of thing. So, so now the important question is, how do you practice SRE? Okay, so when you, you say, okay, I'm, I'm changed. I have changed my mindset. Your team will say, we have also brought the different culture, different way of working together, bringing the lots of automation in place, practices, process, tool set, and blah, blah, blah. But what you are going to do on daily basis? So the first thing which you are going to do is eliminating a toil. Okay, there's lots of you know calculations you can do that, but eliminating a toil. That is a something which you have to start working on it. And then working to the service levels, SLI, SLO, SLA zero, and failures means any failures which you have you got it, incident, post mortem, and stuff like that, which are to do that. So now look at this. This is one of the huge cases. Okay. One of the huge cases. This is one of the toil. Okay. This is one of the toil. So you have a logs. And what you do as a SRE team, you log in weekly and delete the old files. Why? Because this space should not fill it, fill it up. Okay. Nearly each logs fill disk daily. So what you did script to delete the old logs. You created a script to delete the old logs, logs in and run daily. Now, earlier it was in one server, so you used to log in one server daily and then clean it up and script. Now, the same server got increased, scaled up to the 50 server. So what to do? So you introduce the cron job to run the script daily. And the final solution would be, see, this is the this is a toil. Till you start working manually, this is the toil. But the last solution is a superb. Last solution is superb. Work with a dev team to reduce the locks. So are you understanding the see? And do you understand the difference between the daily work toil and how can you reduce it while working with a dev team? Because ultimately logs is being generated by application and applications can be configured in a certain way. So logs can be minimized also. Correct, no? All of you? Right. Are you able to correlate this one? So you have yes. To, so this is the process. I mean, this is the one case, huge cases. But now we see you as a team, you all have to sit together in one room and you can call that day is a Toil day. Okay, toil day. And together you sit and see that all of your tickets and experience which with the projects and see that which are the toil which you have and which you need to how you can how can you eliminate permanently or to the maximum level. So this is the one of the huge cases which we have. Now working with the service labels. Okay. <laughs> So here, this is one of the huge cases. Service level is maintained. Then you did the new release. They, because of one bug caused latency issues. So what happened? Increase the capacity, report issues to the development team. Now, new release, config issues cause outages. Now what you did manually, you fix the config. And restore the service. Block new release for agreed period. This is you might have done it. I have done so many times. So what has happened here? You block the release altogether. Why? Because the config issues are there. That means there is a config issues which is uh, there's a config should be there in the production uh, development, which was there in the uh, in pre production and testing, but it was not there in the production causing the issues in the software. 
So have you have you come across anything as such configuration issues, dependencies issues, and something like that? Lots uh, in the past, but not uh, not recently. So yeah, this is one of the huge cases. You have to see how can you eliminate this. Can can you uh, go back to the earlier slide? So here the block new releases for agreed period, right? So this is where that uh, error budget will come into the picture. Uh, error budget. Will There's be a coming. concept called error budget, correct? Yes, error budget will come into the pictures while setting up the observability. So that means uh, uh -huh. I, I, mean, I have had that discussions already, but I'll tell you at a high level. Uh, I have a one million so one lakh one thousand request. And we'll have a contract SLA with the client saying that okay, more than five errors is not allowed. I mean, let's say 1,000. I said right, so maybe more than 10 errors is not allowed. So 10. Uh, I mean, they look, find out the percentage. 10 out of thousand request. What is the error percentage of budget? So that's called error budget. That means you cannot cross that more than that. So that's the budget you have it. If you cross that, you'll have to pay penalty for it. So something like that we have it. So this is one of the issues. It's a toil actually. You have to work on it. How can you work on it? Think about it. Here DNS related changes because you are work, working in operations. OK, so DNS change causes outage. So what do you did? Go on to the route 53 AWS, fix the DNS issue. You did the postmortem into the root cause and then you build a DNS change tool. So next time it will not be a problem. So these are the ways you can identify the toil and try to fix it. OK. So. This is the things so now. We are going to learn how do we eliminate. Toil, how can we automate? So what is a toil? We understand that anything which is labor intensive. Repetitive in nature and can be auto automated by tools. That is toil. If you're saying, hey, I'm working very hard. Day and night, eight hours in a day. So you are not giving the right credit for it. Yes, we are a human being. We are we are supposed to do the smart work. So if anything can be done by tools, then why we are doing it? Simple. Repetitive means you know, I don't have to tell you the repetitive work, we have to automate it. Correct, no? all of you. So toil definition is very straightforward. Anything which you do manually, repetitive in nature, and can be done by tools and robots. That's a toil, and you should automate it. This is a toil. What is the overhead? Overhead. So sometimes some administrator course that have to get done, but should not be categorized as toy. This is called overhead. That means their work done to be done, but don't coil as a toy. Your manual work, maybe something like that. Overhead often not directly tied to the running of production services and include tasks including the hiring, paperwork, sync up, coordination, mails, this, that, and all stuff like that. Okay, review, self-assessment. We see we eight hours we spend, but not everything we do for the software, software product. We do for the we go for have some chit chat. We do some training also. We have a review meeting, self-assessment, and many, many other stuff. We do that, right? This is called overweight in the SRE concept. So strategic work in SRE. So they are strategic work. These strategic strategies include production readiness reviews early engagement and continuous improvement. So now look at this. This is a simple slide. So you as a team. Decided. These are the list of tickets you have. So some of the work, some of the issues, some of the tasks, some of the incidents, some of the bugs, some of the this, that some of them are overhead. Some of them are toil. And some of them are strategic values work. So you as a team, SRE team, divide all of your work to into these three categories. Now, what is toil? What is overhead? What is strategic? We understand that, right? 
all of you. Yes. Yes. So, if you do not fix toil, the strategic work will be compromised. Look at this here. Organization will stop growing. And the moment organization will stop growing with the no, no strategic work, then in a few years, you're, you know, you will become obsolete. So see that the importance of toil. Look at this. Toil should not grow because it will impact your strategic work. Correct, ma'am? Yes. So yeah. see that what has happened. No, no future in improvement now. <laughs> Only overhead and toil. So that means you are running a system for a few years, and after that your project will go into the waste dustbin. So look at this example work. Again, it's a use case. It's very simple to understand. Let's say if you are <laughs> sorry. See if your app is not responding. So you will do what? Race ticket. Think, think simple. That's very important slide actually. You have to change your mindset a little bit here. So if your app is not responding, you will trace a ticket. Someone will do login to the server. We'll do some manual repetitive automatable work. And what you did, restart the process and start working. Correct now? Reactive, low value, scales linearly. That means there is an issue, then you take action. That's called reactive. Did he really added some values to the project? Not exactly. It's a low value work. And scales linearly. So this is the one problem which you have. How do you solve it? Tell me. You, I want you to think and tell me. How do you solve it with your current experience and with the current knowledge? How do you solve this approach? I want this is a toy actually. What changes you might bring? Just assume that we are having a team meeting. Okay, all of us are trying to reduce the toil. This is one of the toil and each one of you will tell the ways to reduce the toil. So what would your take? And what input you would like to share for the team? So I, I, I need at least 10 inputs for this. Tell me. App should restart as soon as uh, it stops responding. Automated in that way. Automated. Yeah. That's a very good strategy, actually. Yeah. But what technology app, is new? App not responding means someone is trying to test and raise a ticket, right? So before that itself, if we have a good observability, we should be able to know by using some alerts. Very app good. Is good or not? Yeah. Very good input. What else? Yeah, we have a tool called uh, Phantom. So. Uh, that can be used for this automate, automating the restart process, which as Ajo has called out. And we have used it a, for a couple of scenarios. That is also good. Yeah, I have used the Randek also, in fact. Yeah, what else? More, more, more output days. Um, uh, we have to have a better logging. So if you are automating that every time, if you're not able to ping to that app, you want to restart. At the same time, we should be logging somewhere so that we know how many times the system has been logging. So whatever the automation we are doing it, we should also have a track of what is happening behind us. Something like auditing, something like that, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's a good input, yeah. More, more inputs, guys. I mean, I think we are getting very good inputs actually from all of you. Please tell me. They should be monitoring that uh, the app is not responding. So before the user can raise a ticket, the team can work on it. Yes, that is also good. Yes. So overall, yes, okay. these are the practices as a team. Yeah, please continue. Um, alerting. Like uh, when apps are responding, we should, we should have the automation job monitor and send the alert email so the team can quickly respond. Yes, that's also good. Yep. So yes, so many useful insight. So yes, is it a toy? So human said, hey, I can do this. So robot is saying, hey, me too. I can also do that. What's the big deal? So yeah, try to find out the engineering approach in SRE. 
So whenever you try to, uh, you know, fix the toy, first see that whether it's strategic value, whether do we have strategic value? If I want to fix this uh, toil, how much? How much it will give me the benefit out of it? How many hours it will save? Uh, how many? How much cost it will save? And human, you know, sometimes you know, uh, there's a one thing which we call it. Uh, sometimes toils are also good. See, sorry, we are learning because to avoid the toils, eliminate the toils. But sometimes we love the toils. Why? Sometimes. Because we are all are human beings, right? We are all are connected with emotions and uh, feeling of failures and success. So sometimes you, when you fix the toil manually also, then you will get an appreciation email saying that, hey, good job, Rajesh, good job, Chandan, good job, you know, Mahesh. So you feel good action. So if you, you feel sense of achievement. So that is also good toil action. So not every time toil is bad. But yeah, coming back to the strategic value, try, try to find out strategic value, high values and stuff like that and get it done. So yes, you need to bring the practices, system engineering, software engineering. System engineering works on the configuration and tuning. Software engineering works on the reliability and scalability. So here, what to do? So here app is not responding. Raise a ticket, log into the server, Restart the process. This is a toy. What about if I migrate to the container? If what about if I migrate to the container and you know that Docker and Kubernetes, they have inbuilt health check capability. And if one of the app, one of the container, one of the pod is not responding, they'll immediately replace with within a milliseconds, replace with the new container all restart themselves. I don't have to write any configurations, any code, any tools and something. Just change in the platform. What about this idea? Is it good idea or not? Perfect. Yeah, I don't have to do anything. Why I should bother about learning new tools, configuration changes, configuring in hundreds of servers and all these things. Just change the platform. It has it. The container has a health check, built in health check. <laughs> So runtime change, use platform capability, don't fix the issues. That is what, how you have to change your mindset to fix the toil. You have to fix the toil, you have to eliminate the toil for the long run. Yes, all of your inputs is perfectly fine, I must tell you. Let's say if you are not in a container, you are not migrating in a container within a one month, right? So you have to do that. Whatever you said, you have 100% you correct statement and 100% correct input, all of you will have to do that, but you have to also see that how can we fix this kind of issues permanently? There is a configuration changes happen in the development team, which got not introduced in the testing or maybe introduced in the testing team, but not in operations. Why? Because we a development environment is different, QA environment is different, production environment is different. What about you migrate to the container? So you are running the same image in the development, same image in the testing, same image is in the production, and it's a permanent solution. So that is how something you have to bring the values, technology in a ways so it is a permanent fix rather than short term fix. So we'll have to come up as a team to bring all these ideas together and find out which is the best way to, uh, you know, uh, eliminate the toys. OK, so it's a permanent fix. More work introduces risk, fist clicks and all stuff like that. Well, you can work on it. So yes, so practice of SRE, I mean, in terms of uh, toil, uh, Google suggests we should not have more than 50% of the toil in an overall bucket in SRE team. Okay, you should not, you should never have a 50%, more than 50%, max 50%. So because you have a strategic work also, over, overhead work also, so more than 50% is not recommended. So yes, Google uses 50%, they have communicated publicly, Commitment to the team. Toil guaranteed. Yes, we will. It's a part of the job. Management support, clear differences from ops and stuff like that. So yeah, these are some of the animations or visualizations, which you can say visualizations for like what should be the ticket toil. We can keep fixing it. What should be the percentage and all. So I just said toil. 
here in this image, you have a 50% toil out of which, out of which. Some of the toils, they you do that manual work and remaining toils, you try to automate it, eliminate it with the high strategic value work and all something like that. So some of the practices you have to bring in. Uh, this tactics, the moment you start practicing it, you'll get to know all this strategy. I think all of us are very expert in it. What should be solved first? We should not be touched first. Uh, what are the things which we can do easily? Which things we cannot do easily? How much time it will require? How much of budget is required for fixing and eliminating the toil? So these all things I don't think so I can teach you because we are you know coming with this built-in knowledge actually over the period of time. So yeah, toil can be attractive, quick fix, a sense of achievement, but in short term and it's bad for morale. Team energies dip, strategy project stalls, and people move on. So that's what I said, right? Uh, if you automate everything, sometimes some toils are also good, actually, as I said, because it's really boost team's energy, individual, uh, you know, aspirations, and all stuff like that. So it impacts a lot because we all are human beings. Uh, yes, so there's some of the process to identify and visiting toils. So you look at this here. Um, this is one of the huge cases. Here, this is the task which is one of the tasks which we have. So see here. Uh, add to the add. So there's one user has got introduced in the system. One let's say new new joining. So what need to be done? So manually, what you'll do, let's say I am joining your team tomorrow. So I will say, hey guys, can you ask, add my access to your system? Then you'll you'll do something like this. Add me. To the GitHub repos. Then second step, so I got a source code access. Then cloud access. You will add my access to the Azure subscription. Then third thing, you will add my access to the Slack channels. Then after that, some of the systems as a read only, and some of the systems as a coordinator. And can you automate this? Think about it. Can you automate it? And mind it here. Uh, when you are automating it, you have to keep this in the practice. Uh, these things, uh, whether it's strategic value, high value. I mean that toil is uh, is really worth of fixing it. Whether strategic in is in the long term or it's just a short term, or is it really you know human can do or machine can do. So all this thing, perspective you have to think about it. So tell me your uh, your input here, all of you. Approach. Just tell me the approach which can be done easily, which cannot be done easily. And stuff like that. Which is required lots of budget, bandwidth, time, worth of doing it, which is not required lots of worth of doing it. So. So adding to GitHub repo is easy, right? And API call. Also. API yes, call. API call. Uh, subscription um, also API call. That's also an API call. Slack also API call, so it's easy. Yeah, yeah. Add right. to O system X. Yes. This is really you have is, to do the uh, background work, yeah. Which system he should be having access, which system I'm not, all this thing. So yeah, some is worth of it. Some are not worth of it. So you have to add, you have to break it down each tile, uh, toil also, and do that. So yes, uh, data driven analysis. I think I'm not uh, deep diving into this discussion because more or less we understand at a high level. Uh, data driven analysis identify the toil, quantify ongoing ongoing cost, how much it will cost us to fi fix it, and see that how much toil reduction backlog. Prioritize the project which is which is important, which is not important, and see the progress of overall. See the cost benefit analysis, which is good, which is not good. I mean, which is costly with, to fix, which is not costly to fix. All this thing you have to have a checklist for each toil. You will do that this one, and then based on that prioritize the thing. So you will also see that automation projects, software engineering support, maintenance updates, how much it required. Let's say I automate today. I can do any anything. You can do anything. You all are engineers. 
you can do any things but you have to maintain also right you have to support also you have to upgrade also so is it really cost required for that build cost versus toil cost time to value maintenance and support sharing with the team other team okay outages are news capacity so yeah you have to have a right checklist for identifying measuring the each toil and which is worth of you know doing it and which is not worth of it you have to also uh, do the proper analysis and documentation and repetitive process and stuff like that so yeah so these are some of the checklist you have to plan for the number of days how many number of toil in which we have which are the priorities one uh, how many days we are going to spend on it uh, how many of days we are going to work on the strategic work or post uh, uh, any other work and stuff like that so yeah like that so this is the idea when you start working as a team in the team meeting you will say okay there is a one toil called onboarding there is a one toil called patching there is one toil called provisioning how much effort maybe one day for this patching two days provisioning one day uh, how much frequency repetitive work which is happening on the onboarding maybe five uh, times in a month or something 2x in month 3x in a month something like that so how many days you required for that five days four days three days so this kind of table you will create for the toil based on your experience and team meetings and all stuff like that and then you will decide to that what to do what not to do so here you see that for a few things we have apis it can be automated for rest of the things we don't have uh, api but required days is 65 days is it worth automating it i think i'll just automate the first three and leave the rest of the things okay so again os patching how many days 40 days which can be automatable which cannot be automatable are we having right bandwidth this all planning you have to do at each toil level actually this is a 10 so yes prioritize so right now priorities but we do, did this so same issues onboarding issues patching issues and provisioning issues so for that we decided okay uh, 12 days is 5 times project if you want to automate it it will take 65 days patching 40 days provisioning 10 days so you can prioritize which you, which is important for you and stuff like that so which one you should focus and stuff like that so yeah this is how it's a uh, you know things which you have to do so toil reduction side effects productivity it increases system reliability and availability it increases tool sets become a standard over the period of time system simplification and culture of automation So yes, priority probably ten days. You will do the first. Based on I'm mean, just I'm discussing. I'm not telling you something which has been used. This information, this this things will you'll take a call as a team. So this is my priority number one. This is my priority number third. This is my priority number second. So this is how you do that. Okay. So yeah, this is the something we decided, and you will do something like this work. of plan is a team members so now you will see that how many engineers you have available so you can allocate them to the work on those stuff and accordingly so yes twice day five days project estimate 65 days and all stuff like that so after that all this work what about the dealing with the remaining re remaining toils so keep doing it it's a repeated work identify and measure batch up and ignore some of this ignoring is also good for some time uh you should also see the some of the techniques uh at a service facade self service uniformities and stuff like that okay so now uh, hey raj sorry uh, can you please give little more insights on can you please go to the previous slide yeah yeah impact reduction techniques self service service facade uniformity Ah, so service facade means uh, uh, sometimes uh, you make it self-service also. I mean, service facade means you create a uh, automatable process and make it self-service rather than you doing it. Uh, your clients or end users can do that also. Uniformity means uh, bringing the uh, the single tools for fixing all the problems or single process uh, for all this eliminating the toil. So these are the things which can do the impact reduction in technique. for example i'll put it in this way source code management you are using gitlab also bitbucket also and get it also and github also four tools so of course you have to support more you have a more toys what about bring it one so that's one of the initiative uh, so bring it the uniformities for this and get it better
Okay, so now yes. we'll discuss about the service level. Limit of things we have discussed, uh, but we'll also discuss the service level more detail and hurting. So service level indicator SLI, service level objective SLO, and service level agreement SLI. So remember that if you want to implement the SRE, first thing, eliminate the toil. And I gave you a little bit of idea about how to eliminate the toil. So first thing, what is toil? How to identify the toil? How to measure the toil? How to prioritize the to toil? So these are the things you have to do as a team and make sure that all the time the toil should be lesser than 50% of the overall work. And you should out of 50%, 33% uh, you can always work to reduce it, eliminate it. Some toils are good, but again, you as a team have to decide which toils are good, which toils are not good, and uh, prioritize the budget, right? The number of days, right? Uh, see the skill set which you have available, and based on that, you do the auditing and then finalize the stuff. At a high level, all of you are understanding this, eliminating the toil process. Yes. OK, now what about the service level management? So this is the second work which you have to do that. So yeah, so SLI. In a, in a simple way, I say SLI is something which you get it from the observability. In a simple, more simpler way, monitoring. So SLI is basically a matrix measures, OK, which you get it from the system. So it can be response time, request time, it can be storage, it can be pipeline, and different types of SLI is there. So second thing is SLO, objective. So let's say your CPU real time utilization is 70%. I'm putting in a very simple way. So what is the objective? So your objective should be, okay, so it should be lesser than 65%. That means still is under objective. And SLA is, agreement is, 80% or something like that. So if it is, it's going more than 80%, you are breaching the contract. You have to pay for it. You have to have a fine for it. But SLO is making sure that it should be below the SLA. And SLA is a real one. And SLA, service level agreement, or contractual agreement that outline the level of services end user can expect from the service provider. So now, SLA, the real number on your performance, the SLO is the objective your team must hit to meet that agreement. SLA, the agreement that you make with your clients or users. So this is a thing. So here through the hey, SLA, Rajesh, Rajesh, sorry to disturb you. Can you go back to the earlier slide? Um, so SLA is very clear. OK, this is this is the whatever is currently happening in your system. You use the monitoring tools to get the numbers out of it. And SLA is something that you define with the, the stakeholders that that I will be, you know, I, I'm, most of the time I'll be operating at this level, right? Yes, yes. And uh, if 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 the SLA is breached, then you know you have the liberty or privilege to question me or uh, you know penalize me for uh, breaching that SLA. Now SLO still not. At least I'm not getting a very clear. SLO means, what is huh. so you will call me saying that, hey, Rajesh and John and Peter, let's have one meeting. Meeting okay. for what? Meeting for designing, uh, deciding that till how much we should maintain the numbers, the metrics, the threshold, that, that number, so it should not breach the SLA at any given point of the time because if you breach the SLA, it, it's bringing lots of huge, huge cost to your company. So you will say, let's say, SLA is set by the client saying that if you breach 80% of the CPU, I'm just putting in a simple link, 80% of the CPU, then you have to pay for it. Then what we'll do, we'll play a tactics within a team. We'll say, hey, 80% are SLA. If you breach, there's a problem. Can we set 70% for ourselves only? 10% so gap will you be having? Now, so you are setting the SLO so that uh, you don't have to you know, pay for your uh, client. To breach the team SLA. objective. Team objective. Yeah, got now, it. I'll put it in one more way. Let's say <clears throat> client is saying out of 100 requests, only one error is allowed. That means your uh, percentile is 99%. So that means error budget is only 1%. So we'll say we'll we'll plan our ourselves only. 
see one percent is like okay 99 percentile so that means can we have one thing can we set the the error out of 100 uh, i think 100 will be a little lot to calculate let's make it thousand thousand out of it uh, 10 error is allowed that's one percent so we will we'll set up slo saying that okay out of thousand request only the number of errors which you are getting from the apm or whatever it is let's say six seven so seven we will try to control so at any given point of time we will not touch the 10 and maybe sla is a real sli is a realistic number makes sense yeah thanks okay so, so we can say it's a internal sla within the team within a team yes because you don't want this to use the quant this is a defensive mechanism so that you don't yes. get yeah. into that uh, SLA breach mode. Yes. In terms of SLO is like when we have to take action. It's simple logic actually. I'll, I'll put it in a one very uh, simple way. Uh, it's like, see, you have a train at 10 o'clock, but why you want to reach to at 9.30? Tell me. You don't miss the bus. Okay. Yes, simple. Because you can reach 9.59 also and you will not miss the bus. I mean train, sorry, but you want to reach at 930. So because you want to keep some buffer in your hand, so something can be adjusted over the period of time. Correct? No? Yeah, makes sense. Whether an SLI is like if train is set at 10 o'clock and it may go up at 1030 or something like that. OK, so SLI, SLO, SLA, key performance metrics. Measure product characteristics calculated in the percentage, SLO, core of SRE practices, data driven approach, build smart SLOs. By the way, SRE team is not SRE team without SLO and SLA. That means if you have not set the SLO at least, I'm not sure about the SLA, but that means you do not have SRE team because the SRE team, the core principle of our SRE team is to eliminate the 12 second ones managing the service level. So service level, if you have not set SLOs, that means why what you are working for it, what is your objective, what is your target for the team? So it's important. And then SLA. Okay, so yeah, these are some of the differences with, with the SLI, SLO and SLA. I will not get into that too much because we have discussed at a high level and I assume that many of us understand that it's not very difficult because we are in the same robot. So yes, this is the things. So these are the team members and stakeholders, SLI, SLO and SLA, who's involved and all. Some of the graphs for this. So here, objective is 200 milliseconds. Agreement is at the 300 milliseconds. And if 300 milliseconds, if you cross, customers are angry, upset, if you is below this below that 300 milliseconds sad if you are below this SR, SR, slo your customers are happy so this is the ux so you see here this is the mood of expressions when your customers are happy or when they are sad and when they are frustrated and stuff like that so how to set the sla i mean every tools actually nowadays if you see we'll have sla set for that so Datadog is one of the tools which you can learn. Uh, Neuralink, you can use that. Elastic, you can use Grafana, you can use. So there are all places you can set the SLA. Now error budget. Uh, we had a little bit of discussions actually. So yes, error budgets are acceptable levels of unreliability for a service before it falls out to of compliance with an SLO. So but error budget means uh, something which is allowed and if you cross cross more than that, again, the financial burden you have it. So you cannot sustain those error budgets more than that, the threshold or SLO what you have. So this is the key, key terms which you use a lot to identify the number of, let's say millions of users are having the access. I mean, they're accessing your services out of which how much, how many requests, how many clients you want the 404 error. That's called error budget. How many are allowed? That is a budget. OK, so this is something which we have. So yes, we can set the success rate uh, in percentage, response time in percentage, response time also in the percentage, so different different things you can set it up. These are the, some of the graph templates which has been given by Google to set the SLOs. So this is the way to you know find out. Uh, so let's say if you set the SLO at 99%, 
that means how many uh, total scope of errors you have in the uh, uh, downtime you may have in the 28 days. So here you see the 28 days is equal to this much of minutes. So that means if you set your SLO 99%, you will have only seven hours to restore their problems incident or not. But if you set the 99.9%, then you have only 40 minutes. And if you set the SLO at the 99.99%, then that means in a 28 days, you have only four minutes to solve the problems. And if you set 99.9999%, that means you have 0 0.4 minutes that uh, so you have to wisely decide the SLOs and things like that. So you, you're understanding that this is just to the feel, uh, input to your mind so you can plan SRE better, SLOs better. <coughs> Are you understanding all of you? Yes. Yes, yes Rajesh. Yeah, so this is uh, some of the discussion. I'll just skip it. Uh, you will see here. This is a 20 days duration out of which 99.9% SLO if you set. You see that error budget is 0.01%. These all are a mathematical formula and it's very it's easy to understand that when you are handling the servers you know, and done. So this is a something which we haven't. So I'll skip some of the topics uh, because we have a limited time also. And monitoring yeah so now guys uh, when you want to set up for observability uh, nowadays we all call uh, these four golden signals no matter which tools you go for it you can set up the alerting for four golden signals that means you should be having alerts for latency traffic errors and saturations so this week four things we call it the four golden signals which you can do that latency Traffic errors and saturations. OK, so this is a Prometheus uh, thing, so I'm not getting into the tooling part right now because. And some of the stuff, so yep. I'm just checking. Ah, so now. Postmortem incident management. So this is the third pillar of blameless postmortem. Yeah. So many features are there. I'm just ignoring. I have a more than 500 slides section. That is. Yeah. So first thing we discuss about eliminating the toil. We understood that that process. Then managing the service level. We at a high level we understood this. The third important characteristics of SRE implementation is managing the incident. So how do you manage it? What are the standard response you have it? Are we having the playbook? Playbook means run book here I'm talking about. Or different tools, we call it a different, different. In a data dog, we call it a notebook. In a run deck, we call it a playbook only. Uh, sorry, a run book. So it's like this, playbook and here. So. Uh, you decide this based on the past experiences and complexity and you set the investigation time and impact. So these are more or less understandable, OK, because if you go for any tools, actually, I'm sure you might have used any tools such as Jira or let's say GitLab or let's say GitHub or some some in, uh, incident management tool, I'm sure. So there you see that these are the fields are already automated. Most of the products, they have a template, best template available for managing the incident. That so means who is the person, uh, what is the issues first of all, uh, which release, which version, where the ser which server, uh, what kind of issues, who should be working on it, what should be the, 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 the time where it should be working on it and all stuff like that. Uh, is it related to some other issues or something like that? So this is the, the incident template actually. So you you should understand that, mo but most of the tools which you use in by default, you are coming back with that uh, certain templates actually. So different different roles we have in the incident management. So we have uh, incident commander, sub commander leads we have, ops lead we have. So different different roles within the teams, uh, we have it and work on it. Uh, so yes, what to do? 
this is something which we need to understand uh, and follow the practice. You know, sometimes what happens, uh, we know that many things, but we don't follow. Why? Because we feel this is too much to do that. So just, uh, you know, do the quick fixes and come out of it. But actually, SRE is uh, emphasizing on the following the right process. OK, so first thing you have issues, you have incident, try that, then examine it, diagnose it, test it and cure it. So these are the model which we follow uh, for each and everything. So these are the practices which you should do that. So tries means get back to the good enough as some remediation tactics, add computer power, reroute traffic, downgrade services, output stable system. Uh, examine means understand the problem, identifying the trigger. Investigation tool you can use for the uh, matrices, dashboard, logging, service graph, distributed tracing. So this, if you see that investigation tool, uh, any observability tools will help you like a data dog neural link and stuff like that. And again, as part of it, examine, understand the problem. Uh, sorry, uh, output, know the problem and trigger. Uh, diagnose, so find the possible cause. Use the analysis tool again, same uh, vertical path through systems. Why is it doing? Why is not doing on what should be done? What are the resources going? Where did it start and all? Output sort is the potential cause. And then test it, cure it. So yeah, uh, how do we publish the postmortem reports? That's important. You have to follow some of the practices as well uh, over there. So postmortem reports, uh, I can share with you some of the template. Uh, but you know, nowadays we have uh, so many tools available to share the postmortem tool, and they will give you the template also. So yes, postmortem uh, goals: you have to document the incident and resolutions, identify the root cause and fix it. Uh, formal documentation drafted by SRE team, review and publish. Process you should be having in place. Continuous Im improvement you should be having it. One more important thing: it should be blame free. What is a blame free, blameless? Both are same. So what is a blame free or blameless? Any idea? Blameless. Solving the problem, not the person who created the problem. Yes, yes. Because we all are human beings. We all are making mistakes. Some of you will make less mistakes. Some of you will do the more mistake. So yes, it should be blameless, blame free and natural and constructive continuous improvement program. So this is the one of template you see. I'm not focusing too much on it because I know that each one of us are using the very good uh, uh, tools for sure, uh, which where we can capture the uh, postmortems. So let me remind you some of this, uh, some of the tools which if you are not using. Are you using Confluence? Yes. Confluence? Yeah, so you have a template already, uh, yes. multiple template for the postmortem. OK, if you're using Jira, yes, you have it. If you're using Datadog, we call it a notebook. If you're using the, this one, what do you say? Uh, New Relic, then we have a runbook over there. So yes, most of the tools, if you look at this in SRE domain, they have a very nice template, but the only challenge what we have is we are not doing it. So we have to start doing it. We have to motivate each and everyone saying that, hey, any pro any products, which any incident which are working, please submit postmortem document blameless and only about the following the certain process and practices. OK, so these are some of the best practices for the postmortem. Uh, I'll just ignore this topic. I'm saying that, yeah. So guys, yeah, so overall, what we discussed, what is SRE? Okay, let me let me write up this one. This sum, sum, we'll do the, we are doing the summary actually for whatever we learned. So we discuss about what is SRE. Okay. Why SRE is important? Why SRE is important? Difference between ops versus SRE versus DevSecOps DevOps. Roles in SRE, activities in SRE, 
functions in SRE. What is toil and how to reduce it? <laughs> what is SLI, SLA, and SLO? And how to manage it? What is rent and post mortem? And how to this is the SRE. So, first thing, important thing if how to there's one more question I would like to add. How to transform from OPS to SRE? This is the most important question as per my you know, experience. First thing, step number one, change your mindset. Each one of us. Second, change the team culture. Third thing, Work, sit together and identify the toils and start working on it to eliminate it. Fourth thing, set up a complete observability. Observability is a huge topic, so I'm not discussing it, but yeah, setting up a complete observability. Work with the development team, engineering team for during the design, development and capacity planning. And all which Keep improving it. Keep improving it. So this is the SRE. What do you think? All of you? Any inputs you would like to add, which I'm forgetting it. Uh, I just skipped uh, some of the discussions. Uh, more than 1000 slides are there. This if I get into this, they become a very complex. But you know, I want to share with you some of the tools uh, for that. Uh, this is the many tools are there. The URL also I would like to share with you. Refer this one. And if you select the Java, so more or less many tools which you have here, different, different problems, different, different, you know, things we have to do that. So you have to set up a Configuration management, containers, monitoring, infra monitoring, log monitoring, performance monitoring, security monitoring, and many other stuff. So, guys. So, whoever who are is in SRE, it's it's a good to um, know all those tools, right? Whatever yes. is yes. mentioned in the yes. DevOps school. Yes. So, guys. What are the tools as per my recommendation? What are the tools? This I am not discussing detail. I'm just giving you input directly. What are the tools? Uh, SRE should. This is a definitely you have to do that. All the tools you have to understand that so it will help you. But you should be very, very, very much expert in web server. Correct mm -hmm. now? Because all of you are running in the web server applications, so that is important. You should know Kubernetes, Docker, and Kubernetes orchestration tool like Rancher or OpenShift or something. You should be mastered in for this. This is a very good one: security, availability, reliability, and all. You can set through the service mess. Okay, you should be very good in terms of service discovery, network configurations. Security is very important part of SRE. So many tools you can learn from me. OK, infrastructure monitoring again. So many tools are there. And some of these I'm mentioning here. So Prometheus, log monitoring tool, incident incident response using page duty on OPGD. And some production environment scheduler and troubleshooter and automation run deck. And monitoring tools. So you learn all these tools here and here also. So if probably again, I'm not asking you to be you know this is the only solution which we are having uh, i'm just giving you my inputs and probably this will help you 
All, all of you are understanding this? Yeah, which one? Yes. Uh, the tools that you have mentioned. Uh, here, some of these tools and some of the tools here. Okay. Okay. So. Any questions, guys? Any inputs? Rajesh, will it be possible to share the slides uh, so that we can yes. at least go through the topics which are skipped? Yes, yes. So here, every slide I'll, I'll share with you. Anyways, that's not a problem. Yeah. So site reliability. Yes. So the slides no, are one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what are the mechanisms we have, right? Like uh, alerting or dashboard, right? So uh, these are all uh, <clears throat> like not actually. Uh, in reality, it is not proactive. It is all uh, reactive only. Once the system is impacted, then only like uh, we are uh, uh, able to identify, right? And now, no. moreover, like we are all into uh, AI, right? So, uh, based on the previous data patterns, and mm -hmm. how can we predict the application's health or uh, application performance? Anything yeah. with respect to SLIs, right? How can mm -hmm. we uh, uh, proactively uh, take actions or uh, get information about that? Yeah, so that is where you know what uh, you have to set up an observability. OK, observability. So that is where now what is observability? How it is different from monitoring? Which are the tools available for observability? So this required little bit of discussion. So what I can do morning only I had one session on the observability front. I'll share that video uh, with uh, someone, uh, one of you, and then you can. Exchange it. Yeah. So you can share it here itself. I mean, in this chat, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, yeah, sure. OK, guys, so now what to do? So guys, I have. Uh, so uh, can we stop the recording all of you? All of you. OK, you want me to stop the recording? Yeah, please go ahead.